pediatric speech and language pathologist and welcome to Teach Me to Talk's Therapy Tip of the Week. There are six ways that parents and therapists can teach late talkers, toddlers with language delays, and kids with autism to learn to communicate. If you'll master these six strategies, you will be well on your way to help teaching a child that you love to learn to talk. All right, so now let's move on to our fourth strategy. And this is the one where lots of parents start and lots of therapists start we're withholding but just like everything else we kind of walk through this in a continuum so we really start with modeling to get imitation going and once imitation is going we do choices and then once kids are doing choices we might bump up to this uh, what we just talked about carrier phrases or the closed method and then then we're ready for withholding so can you see how sometimes if we've never ever even heard a kid say a word and we're trying to you know hold this cup there and say you've got to tell me cup you have to say cup you're not getting this cup until you say it you better tell me and you know that's just too uh mean <laughs> it's mean for lack of a better word especially if you never heard a child say that before and so you can really just invoke a lot of power struggles with the kid just because you're using a great strategy but you're just using it out of order the child's just not there yet and so we can't really uh, use withholding for words when a kid's not really imitating or not even trying to say some words spontaneously on his own. So let's talk about these rules. If you can master these rules for withholding, you're going to use this technique much more effectively. And if you're a therapist, if you have gone, if you have put yourself in that horrible position where you think I'm going to withhold until this kid says it or else, you get the or else nearly every time, right? <laughs> because kids just don't always respond to this. And again, it's because we as the adults aren't using it as effectively as we could. And so you might have had those experiences where you're just left with a kid just in a crying heap for 15 or 20 minutes in a session because you can't get him calm because he's over the edge because what? We put him there. And I'm not saying this to, you know, if you're a parent and you're hearing this and you think, gosh, that's why my kid's crying in therapy. His therapist is putting him there. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that sometimes we as the adults don't always use these strategies as effectively as we could because we're not considering the timing. And so with withholding, if we will adhere to these rules, it's going to be a lot easier and more fun and more effective for kids. So what's our first guideline? We withhold only for things that we know a child really, really wants. That was our motivation piece. And we talked about that back with modeling. It has to be worth it for a kid to try. And especially if you think you're going to withhold it and he has to say it before he gets it. A lot of times, if it's not, if the motivator is not exciting enough, if he doesn't like it, what's he going to do? He's just going to walk away or <laughs> tune you out or whatever his, his choice method of unpleasant responding is. That's what he'll do. And so we have to make sure that we are choosing things that are very, very motivating for him. Now, if you're working with a kid that you think, I don't know. I just, I can't find anything he likes. As a therapist, you've got to do some investigation then. You've got to talk to his parents. You've got to talk to his teachers and people that know him better than you so that you can get a good list of things to use that you can uh, know, gosh, these are going to be winners and you're not wasting your treatment time really, really looking for something that's going to work. And a lot of times with parents, you don't do this fast enough with therapists. You might, a therapist might be offering snacks to a child or a or a toy to a child and you might say he doesn't care a thing about that but you offer him his favorite book and he's going to try and try and try to say this for you or you offer him you know you're trying to use cookies he's a salty snack kind of kid you need some goldfish and so make those suggestions so that you make it easier for your child the more motivated he's going to be uh, the better, the more, the more, again, the more on. He's going to want to try more. He's got a reason for that. Let me say something else here, though. A lot of times kids with autism have obsessions and fixations, and those are words directly from the diagnostic criteria. So I'm not uh, using a word that's derogatory in any way. It's certainly something that we see and that we notice uh, with kids with autism. But when they really, really, really are in love with something like Thomas the Train, that may not be your best bet here. You've got to pick things that they love, but not things that have kind of crossed over the line into obsession so that if they think that you are keeping that and not going to give them their most prized toy ever, 
you may get a lot of uh, negativity or or a lot of heartbreak (laughs) from a little friend because he just doesn't understand what you're doing and so try to really balance that you've got to pick things that he loves but not things that are going to push him over the edge so we've talked about how important that motivation piece is the next piece is again where we blow it a lot of times we will withhold we will try to keep an object until a kid requests it and we've never ever heard him say that word before so the second rule for withholding is withhold only for objects and items that you know that a child can say so if he's not imitated or made a choice selected that as a choice you know when you've modeled it or you've given a choice or you've been doing some verbal routines or some uh, forced choice, uh, closed choice, or uh, closed methods, what I'm trying to say there. If you haven't been doing those, if you haven't heard him say the word in that context, it's very unlikely you're going to get it in withholding. And so that's why a lot of times parents will will say, you know, I've tried these kinds of things before and all it does is make him mad. It's because we did that too soon. We needed to wait until he was really imitating that word in a, in a context that's not this just so much pressure and and it is and again I know you might be thinking gosh she's talking out of both sides of her mouth there she's saying he has to be really really motivated to want it yes but he also has to be able to say it too and we never want to do anything that's an unrealistic goal for a kid because why we know he's going to fail and who likes to fail I mean I don't even like to see a kid sometimes in the assessment I just kind of want to stop even you know and I know that's kind of an unprofessional thing way thing to say or think about it but I don't like to put kids under so much pressure or ask so many things that I know they can't do and sometimes the kid will surprise us and do it and yada 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 but a lot of times we know he can't do this and so I'm not going to do it and so same thing here with withholding if you know that he's never said a word before don't use that pick an easy your target even if it's something he loves try to get him to say it without that pressure of having to say the word before he gets it so uh, let's look at some examples though with how do we even if it's a word that we haven't heard a kid say there might be some instances where we think well gosh I could try this for withholding so let's just use some examples let's say that you have been playing with a child and you've heard him just inadvertently even if he it's kind of an echolalic where he's made a choo-choo sound well you might know gosh I'm going to be able to turn that into requesting if I can if I can hear that more let's see what we'll do with the requesting here let's see if we can get that going I've heard that word and I think that might be a good target if we've heard a kid say something like bye-bye it's two syllables it's the initial b and then a vowel we might try something like bubble you know can he do bubba for bubble and so we have some similarities with the construction of that word so we think gosh that might be a good target if he says mama all the time that's one of his words i try to elicit other words that start with m and so that certainly is something that is an slp you think about that's how we're trained but as other therapists early interventionist ot's or parents it's something you might not have thought about so i want to really want to really clarify that uh, you, a child has a pretty good chance of saying those target words based on what he can already say so that's certainly a factor uh, that you can use too and so Uh, when you're withholding let's go ahead and get to the next point here only withhold three to five times and then what are you going to do you have two choices so three to five times if a child says it certainly you're going to give it to him right away praise him even if it's just an attempt even if it's just an approximation even if you want him to say cup and he says give it to him anyway at the very beginning when you're starting this don't go for perfection with children and 100 percent articulatory accuracy is never our goal with our little friends who are on the spectrum or any little late talker or a friend who has a language delay we want to just reward 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 their uh just any attempt that they're giving us at the beginning now you can gradually over time shape that and and wait till it's a little closer but certainly in this earliest phase of language acquisition you want to be as reinforcing and as as just as easy as you can be about this so that you can really help a child learn how to get that requesting and that reciprocal uh, communication going where you're you're asking him to imitate and he's doing it and then you're responding with praise you really 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 want to get that going so um at the three to five times so as you've got the choices remember what i said if he says it you're going to give it to him but then what if he doesn't say it you're going to still keep modeling that that word you're going to really offer him where he has an opportunity to say it three to five times and then if he doesn't do it what do you do well you can give it to him anyway which is what i do at the beginning because i want him to know okay she's not being mean she really gets me 
she loves me. <laughs> she she wants to be with me. She wa- you know all of those emotional uh, relationship aspects that we want a child to feel, and especially as a parent, you know you are so in tune with that. And so you can give it anyway, which is what I like to do. Or if that's not your thing, if you think, boy, we've been doing it this way for a long time. And I I just, I sort of feel like he's just knows he's going to get it anyway. And I I would beg you not to think that. But if you do, and if you're one of those people and you need something, then go to a default word or even a sign. If you've had a kid who signed more or please or something generic like that for a long time. Again, as some therapists, you may hate those words, but I like those words because it it does kind of serve as a, when all else fails, I can back up and get this word or get even again go back a little a little further developmentally and let him sign or gesture for it just so that he still has to do something to get something but that's up to you I like to go ahead as I said when he's tried it or when I've off when I've modeled that word three to five times I don't want him on the floor in a fit because I wouldn't give it to him on time two because I didn't read his cues and so I'm going to go ahead and give that and, and if I have really worked a child up to the level of imitating and I know that he can imitate a word and he's just not imitating it now I know that something's missing there either something is wrong physically with him or sensory wise and we've got to get him more regulated or he's not really where I thought he was developmentally and I've got to back up again and think about that how can I make this easier how can we work on something that's just not as hard and so that default word or sign will really do that uh, for you too And so um, think about those rules as you were withholding. You've got to just um, make it as, again, as pleasant as possible so that a child is going to want to stay with you and going to want to keep trying. And so uh, that three to five time thing. So let's practice real quick with like that example with the ball with withholding. I might say, oh, here's the ball. Here's the ball. You have to say it. Tell me ball. And then wait, you know, for him to say it in that expectant waiting. You know, that might have, I modeled ball three times there, but that was my first prompt. You know, I'm always trying to give him as much repetition as I can. Then he doesn't do it. You know, then I kind of start over and I say, oh, it's the ball. I know you want it. Say ball, ball. And again, you've done it again. And you can see how a child will stay with you through that. Sometimes they're just you know, just so engrossed with you. They're so engaged. They're just kind of looking at you. They're they're not really ready to say it yet, but they're going to sit there through your whole times and just go through that three to five times like we talked about. But again, model that word as many times as you can. Don't just say ball number one. Oh, we didn't say it. Ball number two. We didn't say it. Ball number three. No, you've got to really talk about it there and really, again, that expectant waiting part and pausing so that he has enough time to respond is going to be really, really important there too. All right, uh, that was that was what I wanted to say about withholding. Our last point here, though, is um, be playful as you're doing this, but still be insistent and still kind of find that balance of control there with you as the adult, with him really. Um, participating with you and keeping him with you and still getting some kind of result where you're not just always kind of giving it before you even try. So look back at that uh, information, the autism workbook, and see how you do with uh, offering withholding now that you know those rules.